Hello, welcome to learn to create BI mobile apps using the mobile app designer. There is a critical need to deliver analytics on mobile devices. If you've been part of a BI project recently, you know that mobile play is a key role. The good news is that it's really quite easy using the mobile app designer to create these apps. There's no coding necessary. You do not have to be a programmer. And there's certainly no need to call IT and ask for help. Yes, average users can create these mobile apps. So this is just one of the applications. It is a simple customer list showing revenue and profit information. So here we are on the cover page for the application. And I'm going to click, going to click the menu icon in the upper left corner to see the other pages. So here I'm going to go ahead and click the link for my customers. And I can now clearly see my customer list by name, alphabetized, sorted, if you will, and also revenue and profit figures. And if the profit falls below zero, it's highlighted in red. So just imagine if I'm in the field with my phone and I'm as I go to visit each customer, I want to know what, what their revenue and profit status is. Very helpful information and available right there at my fingertips. So this is the application that we're going to create. So pay attention to a couple of items here. The fact that the customer name is above the revenue and profit figures, and the fact that we do have these text labels here that are identifying it. So as we design applications, we always wanna be thinking about the layout and how will we display that data to our users. This helps us when we're determining, should we use a graph, should we use a list? What types of views will help us get the information to our users as quickly as possible? So I wanted to show you what this application looked like. And again, I'm just gonna go back to the main page. This is the application that we'll be creating during this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead first, as strange as it sounds, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out of BI because I really want you to see from the beginning how do I get into Mobile Application Designer? How do I start this process? So I'm gonna go ahead and log back in to Oracle Business Intelligence. Now, depending on your preferences, of course, that will determine which page is displayed when you log in. For me, it's the sample app like dashboard page, which is a great starting place, but I want to head over to the home page. So I'm going to go up to the global header area and I'm going to click on the home link. All of these links obviously up here can be used to access the various pages in BI, but I'm headed home. Once I'm on the home page, I can access the mobile app designer from two different options. I can go ahead over to the panel on the left under Create, Mobile Application, Mobile App. I can click on this mobile app link and go into Mobile App Designer. Or, if I prefer, I can use the new menu, Mobile Application, Mobile App Link. Either one will get you to the same place. So the first thing I have to do is think about what am I designing? What type of device am I designing for? And really, the only difference here is that tablets obviously have a little more viewing space, if you will. So some of the components are only available if you're designing for a tablet. So for this particular example, I'm going to select phone. And it automatically takes me to the next screen. And for those of you familiar with BI Publisher, yes, we have to select our data model that we're going to use. For this particular example, I already have the data in an Excel file, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to browse and find the file, and it's here on my desktop or on my PC, and I'm going to pick that. Great, my data is loaded. Now I'm just going to save my data model. I'm going to save it in my shared folders. I have a MAD folder set up. I'm going to go ahead and call it Customer Revenue and click OK. Once I do that, Mobile App Designer will open. And on my left, I will see the data source. I'll see all the columns in that data source available to me. 
So that's what we'll be working with, as well as, if you notice toward the bottom of the data source, calculated fields and filters, which we will cover in the lab, but will not be part of this example. So in the middle, I have my content area, which is where I'll be doing my designing. And every time I select an object on the right-hand side, the properties for that particular object are displayed. So what I'm going to do first is I can tell you about this cover page, which every application starts with a cover page. And normally it is your logo, or it might be a picture, uh, an image of whatever type of information that you're going to display, and just a little name for your particular set of, of applications. In this case, we're going to start by right away just adding a new page, and notice you have multiple page types. In this particular case, we're going to add a tile page. And a tile page does exactly what it sounds, which is a tile's information across the page. So in each tile, you'll have information about whatever member you say it's going to be grouped by. So in this particular example, I'm going to select the customer segment group or customer segment member that will be used for grouping and click OK. So now I see page two, it's the second page in my application and I see customer segment is how the data will be grouped. That's great. But because I'm designing for a phone, I kind of feel like this is going to just not be a good display. It's, it's going to be a little bit too narrow to be able to get that customer name and then the revenue on the left and the profit on the right. It's just going to be a little bit too small. So what I'm going to do while my tile is selected is go ahead and move over to the right to the number of columns. And I'm going to set this to one. So it just gives me a little more room to work. Now I'm ready to go ahead and click on the plus sign up here to insert a component into this tile. And what I'm going to do is insert a frame. And a frame is just something that's going to help me hold or position the objects that I drag and drop in. So I'm going to have three rows because I know that I want to put my customer name up top, I want to have revenue and profit in the second row, and I want to have those text labels in the third row. So that's how I'm coming up with three rows. And again, I'm going to split the revenue is going to be in a, on the left-hand side, profit's going to be on the right-hand side, so I want two columns. And there it is, there's my object. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want that customer name to be sort of in a merged set of cells, right? I want to be able to center it across the data. So I'm going to select the first two cells on the top. And then from the properties dialog on the right hand side, I'm going to join the selected cells. Now it becomes almost a merged cell, if you will. And so the other thing that I want to do is I want to center the data that I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in here in just a second. So I'm going to select all the cells using my control key again when I select multiples. And over in my properties area on the right hand side, I'm going to choose the align to center option to center those. Great. Now I'm going to go ahead and just click that top cell one more time. And if you have trouble getting a hold of it like I just did, just click off of that object for just a moment and it will kind of deselect everything. And then you can click on that top cell again and get a hold of it. I'm going to drag and drop my customer segment information into that, cust into that cell. Now you don't have to have the cell highlighted to drag and drop into it. I usually just do that as a visual cue to myself because some of the applications can get a little more complex. So it's just a visual cue to me as to where I'm going. All right, now that my customer's there and you can see it's already pulling the data, that's great. I'm going to pick up my profit member from the left-hand data source, drag and drop that into the second cell right below Enterprise there on the left-hand side. Whoops, I didn't merely mean to put profit there. So let me get a hold of profit by clicking on that little handle, if you will. So now I have a hold of profit. I'm going to delete him. So I can select any object and I can delete the object. I can also undo, redo, copy, paste. 
So again, these are some of the icons or in my toolbar up here that I can use to help me out when I do happen to just make a mistake. So I'm going to pick up revenue, and I want revenue on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my revenue member. And then I'm going to pick up profit and put that member in the right-hand cell. Great. I'm going to select my revenue and my profit members. And I'm going to format them a little bit. So while I have them highlighted over in the properties on the right-hand side from the drop-down list under data formatting, I can decide how I'd like them formatted. And I'd like them to be currency. And when it's a negative number, I want to use a minus sign instead of parentheses. So I'm going to select the second option. I really don't see any need to have the pennies there. So I'm also going to change the decimals to be zero. Great. Now what I need to do, in my opinion, because how would I know that that's revenue on the left and profit on the right, is I'm going to add a text label to describe these numbers. So again, I'm going to go up to insert a component. I'm going to drag and drop the text label oops, over to that cell. And again, I dropped it in the wrong place. So while it's highlighted, I'll click the red X and delete it. Let me try that again. So I'm going to go up to my components and drag and drop the text label to the cell below. There we go. Now it's in the right place. And I'm going to repeat that, dragging and dropping the text into the cell below my profit. And you can see it says double click to edit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double click, type in the word revenue under revenue. And then I'm going to go ahead, double click again, and type in the word profit under my profit number. Hmm, that's looking pretty good. That's looking very close to what we want. Now it's called page two at the moment. And if I don't relabel the page, that's actually what my user will see. So what I'm going to do is there are, there are a variety of different ways to change your, the names of your pages. I'm going to simply double click up top and I'm just going to call this customer. I will tell you that this is um, fairly, fairly small up here. So you want to keep your labels kind of short. So customers will work just great as my label up top as my page name. Okay. The other thing that I want to do is maybe just add a touch of color or even maybe I want to um, change the font. I do have a little bit of room. I want it to be easy to read. So I'm going to select all the cells and I'm going to go over to the properties on the right. And in the font and formatting area, I'm going to go ahead and increase my font to 14. And just to kind of jazz it up a little bit, I'm going to add some color. So I'm going to choose the customer segment uh, member there and I'm going to click on the little color bar in the properties area. Now it's not labeled to change color. You just have to know magically that this little black bar can change colors. So I'm going to click on this black bar and I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, I don't know. How about if I make it kind of a little deeper blue color, just kind of jazz it up a little bit. And again, as, as they're looking at this, it might help to have color to differentiate between the customer segments. So again, it's just an easier way to do it. The other thing I might want to do is really call attention to that profit. When it falls below zero, I, I just really want it to stand out. So I'm going to select the cell that holds the profit numbers. And then again, properties on the right. I'm going to go over to conditional formatting, highlight. And when my profit field falls below, so is less than zero, I want to change the cell background color to red. So I'm just going to pick a red color and say OK to that. Now the font might be a little bit hard to read. So in addition, I might change the font color to a white. So that's pretty good, but I also might bold it as well. So it really kind of stands out and is easy to read. OK, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and preview the page. So now you can see, here's the customer's page that we just designed. I see the customer name up top in blue, Consumer Corporate Education. And I can very clear, clearly see the revenue and the profit figures. So again, now if I'm below zero, I'm going to appear in red. So very easy and helpful for your users when they're in the field. I can use, the, again, the menu icon in the upper left corner to take a look at my cover page. Hmm, that's not looking so good. 
I'm going to go back, click on edit and kind of dress it up a little bit. Okay. So a couple of things that I can do, one of them, I can select this image in the middle and I can choose to replace it. So I'm going to, while the image is selected, go over to the properties right hand side and I'm going to click on the select image button. A couple of different ways I can get an image in there is from the local directory or using a URL or if I have the image saved as part of my data source, I can choose that option. For this example, I'm choosing select the image from a local directory. And then I'm going to browse to where I have that particular image saved. And I'm going to insert, of course, the Interrel logo in there because I would not be a faithful Interrelite unless I did that. Now, I can use this little thumbnail here in the lower right corner to resize that image. I can make it as big or as small as I like. The other thing that I can do, obviously, is double click right here to add a title. So I'm going to add a title of Revenue and Profit. And while that's highlighted, I might want to go ahead and select under Alignment, Properties right hand side again, Align to the Center. All right. Now, I don't happen to have a subtitle, and I don't really feel there's a need for a subtitle in this case. So what I'm going to do is while my subtitle cell is highlighted, I'm going to come up and click the red X to delete it. Perfect. Now, I may not want it to say cover page up top either. For this example, I'm simply going to call it Mad Lab. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to preview again. So there is my newly formatted cover page. So it's looking very different from when we first came in. I'm also going to show you again, customers still here, looking great. So really, it's very easy to create these apps.